The Bible provides rich narratives that trace the origins of different peoples across the world, with a focus on the interconnectedness of all humanity. While we have explored the role of African peoples in biblical history, you might wonder, what about the origin of white people? Who were their ancestors according to the Bible? And how do they fit into the larger story of the descendants of Noah and the formation of global civilization? Today, white people are found across the globe, contributing to a rich global cultural heritage. To understand their origins, we must delve into their deep-rooted history, trace their migrations, and recognize their enduring contributions to human civilizations. In today's episode, we will thoroughly explore the origins and migrations of these peoples who are often associated with Europe and other regions. We'll trace their ancestry back to foundational biblical events. However, we have to keep in mind that this connection is drawn from various interpretations and ancient texts. We've worked to explore all the relevant details and present you with the various interpretations surrounding this topic. Thanks for being here, and if you find this content helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to support our channel. Now, let's begin. The question of racial origins has often been approached from various perspectives, but the biblical narrative emphasizes a shared humanity that begins with Adam and Eve. According to scripture, all people, regardless of race, are created in the image of God. This concept is central to understanding the origin of white people as part of the broader human family, rooted in the same divine creation as all other races. The Bible indicates that racial differences appeared gradually as people moved to different parts of the world and adapted to their surroundings. Despite these differences, all races share the same divine origin in God's creation. From the creation story in Genesis to the establishment of nations, Scripture reveals how God designed humanity to spread across the earth. A key passage supporting this idea comes from Acts 17, verse 26 in the New Testament, where it states that God made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. This verse, along with the creation story in Genesis, forms the foundation for understanding the origin of all humanity. In Genesis 1, verse 26, God declares, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God then created humanity in his own image, male and female, establishing that all people, regardless of race or ethnicity, share a common origin in Adam and Eve. This shared creation in the image of God gives every person inherent value and dignity. From the beginning, this unity of humanity is emphasized. As the descendants of Adam and Eve spread across the earth, different nations and people groups, including white people, came into existence. These distinctions emerged over time as God set boundaries and preordained times for each nation, but the core truth remains that all humans are part of one family. The Great Flood, described in Genesis, marked a turning point for humanity, and from Noah's descendants, the various races and nations, including white people, continued to emerge. The Flood was a monumental event that drastically altered both the Earth and humanity, erasing nearly all life except for Noah and his family. As described in Genesis 7 verse 23, Every living thing on the face of the Earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the Earth. Only Noah was left, and those with him in the ark. This passage highlights the total destruction brought by the Flood, leaving only Noah, his family, and the animals aboard the ark to repopulate and rebuild the world after the disaster. Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, were the key figures through whom humanity repopulated the Earth after the Flood. According to Genesis 9 verses 18 to 19, the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. 
Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the whole earth. Thus, these sons and their descendants were responsible for filling the earth again once the waters had receded. This passage clearly shows that all the different nations and peoples of the world, including white people, can trace their origins back to these three family lines. Shem's descendants settled in the Middle East and parts of Asia, and Ham's descendants moved into Africa and parts of the Middle East. However, Japheth's descendants, in particular, are believed to have migrated into Europe and parts of Asia, forming the foundation for what would become the white populations of the world. As they spread, they formed various tribes and nations that contributed to the development of early European civilizations. This geographic dispersion of Noah's descendants formed the basis for the racial and ethnic diversity we observe in the world today. In ancient texts, the term Japhethites is sometimes used to refer to these groups, and their influence can be seen in the growth of early Indo-European cultures. Japheth's descendants were instrumental in laying the foundation for the great civilizations of Greece and Rome, which would eventually shape the Western world. Known for their seafaring skills, trade networks and political systems, they were central to this region's growth. Their migration, described in Genesis 10 as part of the Table of Nations, highlights Japheth's lineage as a significant source of European civilization. As these descendants of Japheth settled in different regions, they adapted to their environments. Over time, this led to the development of distinct physical traits, languages, and cultures. The pale skin, lighter hair, and other characteristics commonly associated with white people are believed to be adaptations to the cooler, less sun-exposed climates of Europe. We will discuss this topic in more detail in the ongoing parts of this video. This spread of Japheth's descendants across Europe played a major role in shaping early European societies influencing the development of civilizations that would later come to dominate much of the world. Though physical and cultural variations emerged, the Bible emphasizes that all humanity, including white people, originated from a single divine creation, illustrating the unity of the human family. Genesis 10 verses 2 to 5 states, The sons of Japheth, Goma, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech and Tiras, the sons of Goma, Ashkenaz, Riphath and Togarmah, the sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, the Kittites and the Rhodonites. From these, the maritime peoples spread out into their territories by their clans within their nations, each with its own language. Thus, Genesis 10 verses 2 to 5 outlines that Japheth had seven notable descendants who established various peoples and nations across Europe and Asia. They were Goma, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. These descendants played crucial roles in the ancient world, contributing to the formation of numerous ethnic groups, including those often associated with the origins of white people. However, the detailed locations and peoples associated with each descendant can vary based on different scholarly perspectives and historical evidence. Here's a closer look at each of Japheth's sons. Number 1. Goma The eldest son of Japheth, Goma, is traditionally associated with the Sumerians, an ancient people who settled in parts of what is now modern-day Turkey and the Black Sea region. Goma's descendants are often linked to the early Indo-European migrations into Europe, which laid the groundwork for various European cultures. These groups left a considerable impact on the areas they occupied due to their mobility and martial skills. Number 2. Magog Magog's descendants are commonly linked with ancient nomadic tribes known for their expertise in horseback riding and archery. These tribes travelled across the steppes of present-day southern Russia and Ukraine, significantly influencing the cultures and societies they came into contact with. Their presence and contributions played a key role in shaping the diverse and intricate history of early European and Asian civilizations. Number 3. Madai 
Madai is traditionally linked with the Medes and the ancient Iranian people who settled in the region known as Media in present-day northwestern Iran. The Medes, along with the Persians, contributed to the formation of the Persian Empire, which had a profound impact on the historical development of the Near East and beyond. Number 4. Javan Javan is identified with the Ionians, an ancient Greek people who lived in the Aegean region. The Ionians were instrumental in the development of Greek culture and civilization, contributing significantly to art, philosophy and science in ancient Greece. Cities such as Athens and Sparta emerged as major centers of culture and learning. Their influence extended across the Mediterranean and shaped much of Western cultural heritage. Number 5. Tubal. Tubal is often linked to the Tubalites, an ancient people who lived in the region around the Caucasus Mountains and parts of Anatolia. The Tubalites were known for their role in the early trade and cultural exchanges between Europe and Asia, further enriching the tapestry of early European societies. Number 6. Meshek. Meshech is associated with the Mushki, an ancient Anatolian people who were known for their interactions with the Hittites and other civilizations in Anatolia and the surrounding areas. Their presence in these regions contributed to the complex mosaic of ancient Near Eastern cultures. Number 7. Tiras. Tiras's descendants are not clearly defined, but some interpretations suggest they may have been the ancestors of the Thracians, who lived in the southeastern Balkans, modern-day Bulgaria, northern Greece and Turkey. Some speculate they may be linked to the Tiersanoi, a seafaring people in the Aegean region. Another theory suggests Tiras's descendants could be part of the Etruscans of Italy or the Sea Peoples who invaded the Eastern Mediterranean during the Late Bronze Age. However, these connections are based on traditional interpretations rather than solid historical evidence. The descendants of Japheth spread across Europe and parts of Asia, adapting to their new environments and contributing to the diverse civilizations that would emerge. The Migration Period, also known as the Barbarian Invasions, marked a crucial chapter in the history of Japheth's descendants, laying the foundation for what would become modern Europe. This era, spanning from the late antiquity to the early medieval period, saw the movement of various tribes, many of which are linked to the white populations of Europe. These groups, such as the Goths, Vandals, Saxons and Franks, migrated across the continent, playing a significant role in shaping the future of European civilization. As these tribes, descended from Japheth, moved into Roman territories, they contributed to the decline of the Western Roman Empire. This period of upheaval was not just a time of destruction, but also a transformative era that led to the rise of new kingdoms and cultures. The Goths settled in areas that would become Spain and Italy. The Franks established themselves in what is now France, and the Anglo-Saxons formed the early foundations of England. These groups, primarily composed of what would later be recognised as white European peoples, helped shape the political, social and cultural landscape of Europe. The migrations of Japheth's descendants brought with them new ideas, technologies and cultural practices. They laid the groundwork for medieval Europe, which would evolve into the Renaissance and modern Western civilization. From their influence on language, governance and legal systems to their contributions to art and philosophy, these tribes helped establish the core elements of what we now consider European identity. The migration period was not only a key moment in the history of white people in Europe, but also a critical time in the formation of modern Europe itself. The story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11 verses 1 to 9 plays a key role in understanding the origins of different peoples, including the white populations of Europe. Before this event, all humanity was unified, speaking a single language and living together in one place. Their ambition led them to attempt to build a tower that would reach the heavens, a symbol of their pride and desire for fame. However, God saw this as a challenge to his authority and chose to intervene. 
This moment marked a turning point in human history, one that would shape the formation of various nations, including the ancestors of Europe's white populations. God, seeing the potential dangers of their unified rebellion, intervened to thwart their plans. Genesis 11 verse 7 details God's response. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. As a result, the people could no longer communicate effectively and they were forced to abandon their project, spreading out across the globe. This divine act not only ended their construction, but also marked the beginning of linguistic diversity, which led to the formation of different cultures and nations. Furthermore, it illustrates the limitations of human ambition when it challenges divine authority as God's will prevails over human plans. For Japheth's descendants, this meant migrating into the regions of Europe and Asia, where they would lay the groundwork for what would eventually become the white races of Europe. The scattering from Babel ensured that Japheth's lineage, which the Bible associates with these regions, adapted to their new environments, developing unique cultures and ways of life. This dispersion is a crucial element in the origin of white people as the migration into Europe not only separated them geographically, but also set them on a path of cultural and physical adaptation. The cold and varying climates of Europe influenced their development, leading to the evolution of lighter skin, hair and eyes, distinct characteristics of white populations. This process was part of God's providential plan, ensuring that as humanity spread, each group would adapt to thrive in their specific environments. More than just a tale of scattering, the story of Babel serves as a foundation for understanding the diversity within humanity, particularly among the descendants of Japheth. From this scattering, the roots of white populations began to take shape, illustrating how divine intervention at Babel laid the groundwork for the rise of the peoples and cultures that would later define much of Europe. The Bible reveals that the descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth did not remain separate but frequently interacted, traded, and intermarried. This blending of lineages is evident in several accounts, such as during King David's reign, when many foreign mercenaries and allies, including those from Japheth's line, joined Israel. The presence of various peoples within Israel's territory, including the Philistines, Hittites, and others, further suggests a mixing of cultures and genetic lines, reflecting the interconnectedness of ancient civilizations. As Japheth's descendants migrated into Europe, they encountered different climates which shaped their physical characteristics. In regions with less sunlight, lighter skin tones developed over generations, as lighter skin helped people absorb more vitamin D in environments with limited sunlight. This environmental adaptation was part of God's plan, allowing people to thrive in different parts of the world. Other physical traits, like body size and shape, also evolved to suit different climates, with populations in colder areas developing stockier builds to retain heat, while those in warmer climates developed leaner bodies to dissipate heat. Throughout the Bible, we see examples of how God uses different nations and peoples to fulfill his purposes. The story of Ruth, a Moabite woman who became an ancestor of King David and ultimately Jesus, shows how God's plan transcends ethnic and cultural boundaries. Ruth's inclusion in Jesus' genealogy highlights that God's purposes involve people from all backgrounds. Similarly, the story of Joseph in Egypt demonstrates how God can use the movement of people to achieve his plans. Despite being sold into slavery, Joseph rose to power in Egypt and was able to save his family from famine, showing how God can bring good out of difficult circumstances. In the New Testament, the story of Pentecost in Acts 2 symbolizes the unity of diverse peoples under the message of the Gospel. People from many nations heard the apostles speak in their own languages, breaking down barriers and uniting them through faith in Jesus. Paul's ministry also emphasizes this unity, as he preached to people of different cultures and backgrounds. The diversity of humanity, 
including the physical characteristics and cultural differences that have emerged over time, is part of God's grand design. Through the Bible, we see how God's hand has guided the development of human societies, bringing together different peoples to fulfill his purposes. This understanding encourages us to appreciate the richness of human diversity and recognize that it reflects the beauty and complexity of God's creation. Dear listeners, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the origin of white people as part of the broader human family. How do you view the biblical perspective of all races sharing the same divine origin? Additionally, we invite you to share your opinions on the sensitive topic of racial discrimination. How do you think we can bridge the gaps and foster unity, recognizing our shared humanity? Share your opinions in the comments below. We're eager to hear from you. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more intriguing content. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.